Asanteni sana tafadhali tiketi. <coughs> um, Mr. Deputy President, leaders of uh, majority National Assembly and Senate, cabinet uh, secretaries uh, present, senators, members of parliament. Good morning. Hamjamo. Let me take this opportunity to welcome all of us to this uh, a retreat of both the executive and uh, our members of the legislature. Karibuni sana to Naivasha. I came last evening. I thought we were going to have a bonfire, but I found very, many of you had already... I think you had other assignments. <laughs> Uh, anyway, so, but um, I want to say this is a very important uh, retreat. It is the first retreat we are having combining both the members of uh, the executive ministers and the uh, cabinet secretaries and the principal secretaries together with our members of parliament. Last year, we had a similar retreat, but it was just for the executive. But we later had an engagement with different committees. So welcome to this uh, very important occasion. And going into the future, we are going to have at least every year a meeting like this. And so that we can together look at where we are, where we need to go, and how we get there. I must say from the beginning that I am a very proud leader of this team. Um, the last one year has seen us do very many things. And it has not happened because of myself and my deputy, or with the ministers alone, or with the members of parliament alone. We've done this together. And I want to appreciate the input, the contribution of each and every one of us to the place where we are today. I want to remind you, friends, that we have a historic opportunity to change our country. Many of you may not appreciate, because some of us are first-timers, and others do not have as much experience. I am among now the, the oldest uh, people around here in terms of being around uh, politics and leadership. I want to tell you from where I sit, we have a moment in history to unlock the potential that Kenya has always had and to take this country to the next level. I want to urge you that let us not waste this moment. It is a moment when we have a manifesto that I believe, if implemented, and when implemented, it can transform Kenya. We have the numbers, both in the Senate and in the National Assembly, to assist us to change Kenya. I want to urge you, I know there is always a temptation to do what politicians do, and that is to focus at the next election. 
I want to urge you, let's do what leaders would do. Let's focus at the transformation of our country and let us focus at what contribution we can make to change the destiny of our country by focusing on the next generation. We are where we are today as a country because we have always made politically correct, convenient decisions. And the transformation of a country requires men and women who have the metal to confront situations and to look at what is right, not what is popular or what is convenient. I promised you that uh, I will lead from the front. And I will lead from the front so that we can change Kenya. When I said I am a man on a, on a mission, I meant it. We, we have to change Kenya. We have to change Kenya. And uh, if you had any doubt that Kenya is going to change, I want to tell you that um, you just need to be patient and, and watch this space. Kenya is going to change. I am very confident. I know sometimes uh, many, some of us dis get discouraged, some of us get anxious, some of us panic because of exigencies of moments. I want to tell you that uh, we are we are going to take Kenya to where we've always wanted Kenya to be. Many people across the globe believe in Kenya. We must not be the ones who do not believe in our country. There are many people who, are, who have confidence in Kenya. I have been to many fora where Kenya is held in very high esteem. We must not be the ones to undermine our own country. Um, so let me persuade you, uh, leaders, that we need to hem in, to forge together, to think about how we can succeed together. When we, 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 we fashioned our manifesto, we were very clear about where we wanted to take Kenya. We were very clear about how to deliver on jobs. We were very clear on how we, want, we wanted to deliver on health. We were very clear on how we wanted to deliver on food security. And we went out to the people and the people gave us, gave us the mandate against a very difficult political terrain. We must not let them down. We must stay focused and deliver on this commitment. Let me just tell you a couple of things because this meeting is a meeting that uh, is a continuation of the PG we had. So I don't want to prolong what I have to say. I also want to listen to what others have to say. And it is good that today we also have our CSS and PSS so that we can, we can have a, co a convergence of thinking. <clears throat> we will need to collectively 
you know, and, and I like what Ishunga said. There is no other government in parliament. It is our members of parliament. You are the government. So don't stop, stop pointing at some government. <laughs> there is no other government. You are the government. Yes, you are the government. So don't imagine that there is another government I don't know where. We all went to the elections. We campaigned on the same podium. You heard me talk about housing. You heard me talk about uh, uh, universal health coverage. When it comes to implementation, Zaza what this is how it's going to happen. You know, when the rubber meets the road, don't, don't start kusema ilikuwa ikaenda ikarudi apana. We stay the course. Um, let me just point to you some of the things that I think we should, we should be coming as we, as we progress. We brought proposals on many of the aspects that would go to implementing our plan. And I want to appreciate that Parliament has been instrumental in making sure that the proposals that have come from the executive, from the ministers and principal secretaries, as they tailor the programs that are necessary for us to implement the plan and proposing budgets for it. Parliament have done their bit, making sure that there are resources that are allocated for us to be able to implement uh, the plan. One of the big successes that we have had is on uh, matters food security. I think it is a, is, a, is a big issue. We had a situation where we had a crisis, and the crisis was not limited to Kenya. The, climate, the crisis was global because of what happened with conflicts around the globe because of matters of climate change, because of the drought, we had a very, uh, uh, we had a crisis in our hands. <clears throat> By God's grace, we, we got rain, we had a good plan, you people allocated money for fertilizer, the Ministry of Agriculture and all the other agencies helped in making sure that that fertilizer got where we want, where we wanted, and I can report to you that today we have a better harvest than we have ever had in the last five years. <clears throat> and we have today also upped our plan for next year to increase fertilizer that is available. I want to ask all of us here as leaders to look out, you know, you as members of parliament, look out, make sure that you work with the ministry to uh, make sure that uh, your constituents, your regions, your areas have access to subsidized fertilizer. We have standardized the cost of fertilizer as 2,500 for all fertilizers. Speak to Medeka Linturi, speak to his peers, speak to the serious people, speak to all those, and make sure that they do what they must, coordinate with them so that you can get um, uh, the right farm inputs in your areas. We are proposing to expand the coffee uh, cherry fund again in the supplementary estimates, we will be coming to Parliament to ask for some allocations. We are working on with Treasury on how that can be facilitated because um, 
Kofi has had a very difficult time with the cartels and all the other characters in there, but I think it is taking a turn in the right direction. So we will be working with you to make sure that uh, we, we settle that. Same thing to do with tea and uh, all the legislations that are uh, on the pipeline and also in the sugar sector. We have uh, uh, just disbursed the first uh, 1.7 billion in the sugar sector. We are working on the reforms in that, uh, in that, in that sector and hopefully in a couple of months we will be able to have a new space for our sugar industry to flourish again. Also, as you have heard me commit, we are working with the uh, uh, KCC. We will be coming to Parliament for another allocation of maybe about a billion shillings just to make sure that our milk producers are paid on time. Uh, we have uh, made a decision together with the stakeholders. I had a long meeting with them in Nakuru, the milk processors. We have agreed that from 1st of March, we are going to pay milk farmers 50 shillings per liter. And we have also said that it will be paid on time. We are also working so that from the 1st of July, like happens elsewhere in the world, that farmers are paid every 15 days. Because those farmers who are doing commercial dairy deploy a lot of uh, capital so they need money regularly so we are we are working with the industry so that we we can we can we can deal with that we are also working with uh, development partners to enhance the capacity of our processors so that we can restructure our milk delivery so that we concentrate on two areas. We concentrate on supplying the, uh, uh, the, the lower market and we have a big opportunity for export. It is, it, it is a very positive thing that actually our milk products the premium milk products have markets globally, including in the U.S. So we, we have an opportunity to reconfigure uh, that space, and we are working with the milk processors in that, in that corner. We also will be coming to Parliament to ask you to, um, because we are working with some uh, development partners, to see how we can resource the Agricultural Finance Corporation to give it more leverage to be able to support our farmers with affordable credit. Um, I want to congratulate uh, all of us that we have now the four pieces of legislation to underpin uh, our universal health coverage. Congratulations to everybody. I know the ministry and the, the committee in parliament and parliament itself, you have done a phenomenal job and uh, I very sincerely appreciate. We are now working on the regulations and uh, we want to see whether we can conclude this. I don't know, Susan, um, I don't know if Susan is here. Okay, uh, when do you think the regulations will be done, Vana Pierce? When, when do you intend to table them in Parliament? So within 15 days or 10 days? 10 days. 10 days. 
So um, the committee, the chair of the committee, health committee in parliament, I don't know, Mr. B Dr. Bukose and uh, my good brother there, uh, Pato. So please coordinate because uh, those are very important instruments for us to be able to roll out uh, the universal health coverage. <clears throat> delegated, uh, oh, it is delegated uh, legislation. Okay. Mashimiwa, uh, more fire there. And uh, Chep Konga and uh, my good friend Gishimo. Uh, so please, uh, let's see how we can accelerate that because we made a commitment that uh, the people, indigents, we were, we're going to pay for indigents, the people who can afford, and then we are going to uh, adjust the contribution framework so that uh, everybody pays a commensurate or uh, a proportional of, uh, of, 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 their, of their incomes. <clears throat> Let me also tell you uh, that um, we were elected on a platform of creating jobs. It is important. And, and I have always made the argument that if we are spending, and you in parliament are the people who allocate money, we are spending 630, 650 billion every year for the education of our children. From nursery school to university. It will be irresponsible for us not to think about when these young people come out of university, college, and school, what happens to them? And that is why, for the first time, we have programs, deliberate, intentional, on creating jobs. It has never happened. You know, we keep talking, oh, you know, we want to grow the economy so that it creates jobs. But you see, it is possible for the economy to grow, but for there to be no jobs, unless it is done deliberately. And it is the reason why we intentionally put housing as one of the programs for us to deliver the transformation of Kenya and also create jobs. I don't think there is anybody who needs any persuasion anymore on housing. Do we still have anybody who still has any doubt? Surely. You have seen for the, for the places where the housing program has started, including my friend Simon Kingara in Ruiru, there is already a difference. It is reported by the media, the media who has always problems with us, that crime in Ruiru has gone down because of the program we have in, 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 in eh? so you know so, so there is a whole ecosystem of positive uh, vibe when we implement the housing program it will create jobs for us I want to tell you members as we talk today and uh, uh, Alice and Hinga are here. We have close to 130,000 people working in the housing program who were not working last year. That's what it is. Our plan is that by the end of this year, we will have a minimum of 300,000 young people working in our housing program and it will continue to grow so it is as deliberate as that do not um, I, I I know you know uh, Argue, there are different ways of people, people uh, how they want to profile and argue. 
I see many of you trying to still say, oh, you know, the levy. Forget about the levy. Let's discuss about the jobs. You know, the people who don't want the program will tell you about the levy. The people who want the program will tell you about the jobs, will tell you about the, uh, the, the, the uh, making sure that we have decent house, uh, 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 households and making sure that we have new home owners. So, um, I think we are, we are past. In fact, the court uh, said we had left out some people who were not paying the levy. And I said, oh, this is good news. <laughs> Maybe we should go for those ones. So, Murugara and team make sure that everybody pays. <laughs> and I'm happy that uh, tomorrow in Parliament, uh, we should be able to uh, finalize uh, in the National Assembly, let us uh, progress it to the Senate, and let us get working. Let me tell you this. We will implement the housing program. I don't want to say by whatever means possible. I have just said we will implement. <laughs> we will. Because it is what other progressive countries have done. It has worked. It is not an invention. It is what it is. You know? And even those who are opposed to the housing program, it is not because they don't know that it is the right thing. Their problem is that it is us who are implementing, not them. It is just as simple as that. That is their quarrel. In fact, uh, when I had one of our friends say yesterday, when I don't know the day yesterday or the day before, that when he sees things, he feels like crying. It is true. <laughs> because they are now wondering it was actually true that housing was possible, and we wasted time on reggae. You know? They feel like crying, because they can actually see this housing was actually possible. So that's what it is. Many people thought it was not possible. They can now see that it is possible. I want to ask us here, especially our members of parliament, to pay very special attention to some of the things we are doing. Because we are setting up the exam of 2027. So, Mukona Likit, your exam. What you do with it? is your problem. Because we are building markets in your constituencies. Um, we have close to 500 markets. We have advertised maybe two, 300. They are in your constituencies. Go ahead. I have absolutely no problem with our members of parliament going to say, I am the one who has decided that this market be built here. I have no problem. groundbreaking, I have no problem. And the layer. <laughs> yeah? Because this is your exam. This is a commitment we made to Mama Mboga, didn't we? Yes. We went to every forum. Mamboga wakatuambia tunapigwa na jua, tuko na shida, eh, tunapigwa na mvua, atuna mahali cho, atuna maji, hakuna stima, hakuna nini. So we now have an opportunity to do that. Don't let it happen without you. Wewe kazi yako ni inspect every week. Unatembea tembea kidogo, unapitia hapo, unasema sasa, uja unaongea hapo, unasema hii kazi kabisa. Eh? We have 
we have the county aggregation and industrial parks. Members, we have the county aggregation and industrial park. It is a partnership between the counties and the national government. You have a role to play. You know, make sure you go and inspect Kaip in your, in, your, in your county. We have now five special economic zones, six actually, including one of the biggest here in Naivasha. In Naivasha, as we committed, we're going to have a huge industrial city here in Naivasha. We have just concluded the procurement and the purchase of 5,000 additional acres here. Two Alice? Yes. Yes. 11,000 acres, but 6,000 will go towards resettlement of people. So we have, uh, shortly, we will be now gazetting the necessary uh, areas. And already, we have very many companies. I was in Dubai for the, uh, up, uh, for the COP28, and we signed many agreements of people who want to come and set up here on account of our renewable energy, on account of what Kenya looks like going into the future. Take advantage and, and, and be part of it. And it speaks to the jobs element. We're not just doing this as structures. We are doing this because jobs is important. We have to be deliberate. I was in Moranga the other day. And I hope today, I told the governor of Moranga, between today and tomorrow, we already have finished the procurement of, uh, of the, the first phase, which is going to cost us about 500 million. It's going to begin. And we, we want to push this so that we have a good environment for us to create jobs. Further down, in our fifth pillar of the Kenya Kwanzaa Manifesto is the digital superhighway. It is one of the most important pillars of our manifesto. I have had a discussion with the committee, ICT committee in parliament. I have had a conversation with the chair of the CDF committee. We have now changed the law. All of you uh, know that. And I want to urge members here. Your first priority is to make sure that you are ahead of the game in making sure that we have ICT hubs in every ward in your constituencies. You have heard me say it, and I mean it. And many of you who have done a small thing out of it, you have known that you have seen the impact, the impact it has. Jameni. Musifanye program he, ifaulu kwingine, and this is a program of your government. Because the people on the other side, sometimes they are ahead of us. They can see the opportunity clearer than we can. I want to urge every member of parliament here, listen to me, friends. You will create a thousand jobs minimum in your constituency with the ICT hub. We are, we've just concluded we had a thorough meeting with Owalo and many of the other actors on how to deploy internet, on how we, we have already allocated money for training, on how we are going to uh, make sure that the place has power. It is up to you to make sure 
that you are ahead of the curve. So, members, I am talking to many people here. Mutapita Mutiani. If you do what I am telling you. Yeah? You will... You, <laughs> muta, muta, we are setting up the exam for 2027. So, I also want to ask you, members, we have negotiated for opportunities for export of labor from Kenya. We advertised the other day for 2,500 nurses. Bore and uh, Mwadime, how many, how, many, how many nurses have we, have we got so far? Imagine, we have only 500. And these are people who are going to earn 200,000 plus. You know, <laughs> look here, guys, you know, number one, it was, it was advertised in the press, number one. Number two, Mimi. I have been, I have talked about this thing in every meeting. In every meeting. Continuously. Sasa wewe, wakata unageti kwa hiyo mkutano hivi. Unasikia president huyu anasema iko, iko, iko nurses. Wewe ujimulisi kwa kichwa hii nurses. Ukitoka hapo kwa hiyo mkutano. Si unahenda kutafuta mali hiyo iko nurses. Awa nurses hiko. Friends. Because I still see people here saying, we are not aware. You are not aware. Sasa munataka nifanya nini? Munataka nisimame wapi? Nisimame, niweke volume kiasi gani? As we are talking today, listen, members of uh, leaders, as we are talking today, Bore is here. Where is Mwadime? Or that other gentleman? Yes, that Mwadime is there, the peers concerned. We still need 2,000 nurses. Nabado, just just wait. Just what you are talking about. to jaze into tuone. I am just giving you. I am. I am just giving you the exam. Go look for. We have an intelligent person will live here, and go and do what they must do. You have constituents. They will take a lot of offence. If they discover that there are opportunities, imetangaswa everywhere, and nobody has come for them. That is not enough. We have half a million, maybe one million, of such opportunities. It has to be deliberate. Somebody has to do some homework. I am trying to set up the bureaucracy. To my brother, to challenge Kidogo. We were uh, um, to set up both the bureaucracy in Nita and in uh, Nea to support you on making sure that you have as much information as possible. Because I have negotiated many opportunities for young people in Kenya. In fact, um, my Rosaline there uh, just came back from Germany. We are almost completing, concluding the agreement with the German government because they have asked us for 250,000 job opportunities. And they want us to conclude the agreement before June. Is that right, Rosaline? The same thing is going on with different countries. And it is important for me to talk to you, good people, so that you concentrate your 
energy in the right place. Concentrate your energy as a, as a people's representative. I thought we have so many people looking for jobs in our offices. There are so many. So, please, let us work together. Because there are jobs out there. There are young people all over the place. We need to connect them to the opportunities. And please take what I am telling you seriously. You know, I am, I am not talking politics. You know, I am not talking hewa. I am talking to you reality. So, please, any serious leader will listen to what I am saying and do something about it. Because the only thing I, I find when I come to counties, what when I am here, oh, kuna manasi asafulani, alianguka kura tafutia kazi. Kuna mungine hapo, alianguka kura tafutia kazi. Na hawa wengine wote amuzemi. Na opportunity ndio hii ina friends. I told you, we must work together to change Kenya. Please, to Saidiane, Kubadlisha Kenya. And it will take the effort of everybody. Because if we were to get 2,000 people, to Kigawana hapa 2,000 people, so, no, so, so, eh? eh? Sasa, munataka, munataka tukawane hapa. Sasa ni waulize, nani alikatazwa kupeleka 20 ya masalazini? Ati ya mjaambiwa? Munataka kukwambiwa na nani? Kwani ya amuzomi gazeti? Na sahile mimi naongea, munafikiri mimi naongea hewa? What, what are you, sahile mimi naongea, nyinyi munafikianga... Do you understand English or... or uh... <laughs> I mean, friends, I mean... Wewe, waluke. Si mimi nilikuwa bungoma. Ulisikia mimi nikisema hugu sikia. Sasa, ulikuwa nafikiri, wewe... Uh... <laughs> Murizania, you heard me, I was in your constituency. Nilisema ama siku sema. So, I mean, surely, friends, you know, to watch a ye maneno ya... You know, we, we like looking for excuses. Yes. Wamaua. Si mimi nilikuwa maragwa, my dear. Eh? Iyo maneno yote nimesema, papa, si nilisema. In public. Ukiwa hapo. Haza. Please. I have been... Everywhere I have gone, I have not hidden... So anyway, I am not accusing anybody, but I am telling you guys, let us take our responsibility.